we'd like to welcome you back to part two of our current event and weekly Bible study for March 18th, 2012. And uh, continuing on with this little report we're doing on TBN and Paul Crouch, it's the same report, but some Bible verses. Uh, Titus 1 9, and this would be this would be in regard to people like Paul Crouch. Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound do- doctrine both to exhort and convince the gainsayer, gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, like Paul Crouch, especially they, they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not. Why? And I added the why in. For filthy lucre's sake. The Noah Webster 1828 Defession of Lucre is gain in money or goods, profit, usually in an ill sense, like an, it was gotten in an, um, an ill-gotten manner, essentially, uh, or with sense of something base or unworthy. So the word lucre itself is usually in an ill sense. When it says filthy lucre, it's really emphasizing that. But it's saying whose mouth must be stopped, and really, I think that's something that we should pray for. People like Paul Crouch, Benny Hinn, these deceivers, um, praying that their mouths be stopped. Why? Because they subvert whole houses. They're going to hell, and they're trying to take as many people with them, is what it boils down to. And But they want to get rich on the way, you know, before they end up going to hell. Teaching, teaching things which they ought not, uh, you know, and we just talked about that as well. 1 Peter 4.17, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? So going back to the article, Trinity Christian Center, which does business as TBN, is a non-profit in the eyes of Uncle Sam, which means it doesn't pay taxes on income. That was the, that was the carrot that Satan put out before the churches and around the 40s, 50s, in that area, to say, hey, come come on, I mean, be a 501c3 and you won't have to um, pay taxes, you'll be considered a non-profit, you'll be yoked up with the government, true, and and you will have to abide by our guidelines, and we will give you your permission and right to exist, in fact, we will be your creator, because they do, I mean, if you're a 501c3, you were created, you got your right to exist through the the IRS and the government, through abiding by their terms. So, again, don't see a whole lot of Bible for that. Uh, Going further, it reported revenues of $175.6 million, uh, expenses of $193.7 million, and net assets, the net assets of TBN at the time of this writing, were $827.6 million. The assets, eight hundred and twenty-seven point six million, and there's probably all kind of stuff they have in like shell corporations and stuff hidden. And that was at the end of two thousand and ten, according to its tax returns. Its highest paid officer was none other than Paul Crouch. Imagine that, Brittany Coper's attorney. Now remember, Brittany Coper is the granddaughter of Paul Crouch, who is citing these things. Uh, her attorney, Timothy McLeod, said that Coper is readying documentation regarding her charges and will submit a package to the Internal Revenue Service for its review. In her suit, Coper says that she had been threatened by Trinity officials. Quote, after and as a result of reporting and objecting to her employer's unlawful conduct, Ms. Coper was terminated by the TBN companies, the suit says, Quote, in retaliation, TBN companies also terminated Ms. Coper's husband, Michael Coper, who was the Trinity Broadcasting's corporate secretary and vice president of media services. So they both got canned. When questioning about the grounds for termination, Matthew Crouch, uh, which, again, we had already talked about Matthew two different times in this thing, uh, grandson of Paul Crouch, uh, and he's the director now at Trinity Broadcasting, Now, let me read this again. When questioning about the grounds for termination, evidently when they were having a meeting with Brittany, Matthew was there. I don't know if that's his sister or what. 
when they did this, Matthew began tapping the firearm he had brought into the meeting and asked Miss Coper what she thought would happen when she wrote a memo to the board critical of Matthew Crouch's financial improprieties. Oh, wow. I guess the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. So they're in this meeting, and he says, what do you think is going to happen, Brittany, when, when you write this letter of, of critical of me and my financial improprieties? And he's tapping a gun that he brought to the meeting. I guess he's been overwilling to, willing since the time that he said he has to face the reality that his... his uh, this is his dad? I, I think that his, uh, his uh, grandfather was a homosexual. Remember that quote? Yeah, let me read you that quote again. When Paul Crouch's youngest son, sorry, Matt, first learned the father's sexual transgressions, he told the TBN lawyer, David Middlebrook, I am devastated, I am confronting with having to face the fact that my father is a homosexual. So now this is his dad. So yeah, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. And uh, so he's tapping on his gun. He asked what he... What uh, Miss Cooper, what she thought would happen when she wrote a memo to the board critical of Matthew Crouch's financial improprieties. Matthew Crouch continued tapping the gun he was holding to ensure that Miss Cooper recognized the lethal threat being made. End of quote. Several years ago, someone who was suing TBN for plagiarism told the reporter that after filing the suit against them, her brake lines were cut on their on her car, and she was being tailed wherever she went. This is all really biblical Christian behavior, right? You know, threats of death and, you know, strong arm tactics and, and you know. Yeah, it's, it's all biblical. If these allegations are true, then TBN cannot point the finger at God for their protection. They seem to be taking matters into their own hands. <laughs> so that was that story, that article. The next is entitled Paul Crouch, TBN, and Rome. And the first part of it, it just gives you the documentation of where this information came from. It starts out by saying, Few charismatic leaders have more influence than Paul Crouch, head of the popular Trinity Broadcasting Network, which has a worldwide audience through its satellite system. Crouch is a staunch supporter of the charismatic Roman Catholic relationships. Now, there's a lot of Catholics, I've mentioned this in times past, that are actually charismatics as well. They're called charismatic Catholics. They speak in tongues, and therefore they have common ground with the charismatics. None of it's ever done biblically, as far as I've ever seen. You know, one speaking in tongues and two or three interpreting in a church setting. I've never seen that done, personally. I've seen everybody speaking in tongues and maybe one interpreting. It's all out of order. And totally unbiblical from that standpoint. So, um, that is one of the main ways and one of the main bridges that the Catholics have had into, I guess you would say, the Protestant-based religions, which Pentecostal charismania in particular would be part of. I had, uh, when I taught Bible study on, I think, Tuesday nights, in you know, um long time ago when I was in the charismatic church, I had a charismatic Catholic that came every Tuesday. And even back then, I was starting to quickly see the Catholic church was bad, bad, bad. And the first time during the Bible study, I'd brought up that, you know, real obvious flavored facts about the Catholic church in a very nice way. I never saw that guy again. He was not going to hear anything negative against the Catholic church. Well, it's demons. It's demons that blind their minds and their eyes and their ears that they cannot hear. So, TBN has been a tremendous bridge toward the Catholic, um, the Catholics through the whole tongues movement. In 1984, Arthur Blessett was interviewed by Paul Crouch on TBN. Blessett described how he had received the Eucharist, or Mass, which they believe is the literal, literal body of Jesus Christ. And the wine is his literal blood. And that the priests, through the process of transubstantiation, literally from a magical uh, standpoint, evidently, have the literal power to change the Catholic Eucharist, Catholic communion host, and the wine into the literal body and blood of Jesus Christ. 
And it's like literally re-sacrificing Jesus Christ on the cross every time they go to Mass. They're literally redoing what Jesus Christ said, it was finished, it was finished once. It's not like the Lord's Supper that's talked about in the New Testament. It's totally different. It's a totally pagan witchcraft practice, essentially. And it's blasphemous. So, Blessed had described how he had received the Eucharist Mass while participating in a rally. Now, this was an interview with Paul Crouch. They were talking about this as Arthur Blessed in 1984. This goes back a long time. He was interviewed by Paul Crouch. Um, Blessed described how he had received the Eucharist Mass while participating in a rally of 600,000 Roman Catholics in Poland. He said he first registered an objection when the priest came toward him for the... For he knew that the Catholic doctrine forbids giving the wafer to a Protestant. The priest said, you're one of us. And Blessed accepted it. At that point, the studio audience cheered and Paul Crouch said, quote, The walls are coming down. His body is one. There is no difference. He went on to say he was erasing the word Protestant from his vocabulary because he says, I'm not protesting anything. He said, he's right, that's where the word comes from. The Protestants came out of the Catholic Church, Martin Luther, because they were protesting many of the unbiblical things that the Catholics were doing. Now, they carried out their own set of baggage from the mother whore church Catholicism. Obviously a step in the right direction, but definitely not a perfect step in the right direction. And now, what's going to end up happening is those same wayward Protestant denominations are going to go back to the mother whore, Catholic Church has already, already proclaimed itself the one true church, and there's a lot of other Protestants out there that have made that affirmation as well. We're going to discuss that a little bit more in, coming up here. So, there's this gigantic push now to reunite mainstream Christianity, or whatever you want to call it, Protestantism, with Rome. I don't call myself a Protestant. Call myself a born again Bible believing Christian. There was a whole separate line of Christians that came up that were not Protestants, like the, the Baptists, the Anabaptists, the Lombards, the Waldensians. They were not ever part of the Catholic Church. That's the line of Christians I identify myself with. And I don't want to say it's just about being a Baptist or whatever, because I don't call myself that. I call myself what I said before, because I don't see any Bible for denominations. But. If you want to read about that, the best book I know of is, it's called A Faithful Baptist Witness by Dr. Phil Stringer. Faithful Baptist Witness by Dr. Phil Stringer. And if you get that. And to me, again, it's not about a Baptist thing. It's about documentation of history. It's very, very well written. His books are real easy to read. He's a great preacher, too. Anyway, going further, on his Praise the Lord show, Friday, May 31st, Paul Crouch announced that Benny Hinn was arranging a private meeting for him and Pope John Paul II. Benny Hinn was setting it up. Well, who else better than another agent of Rome? Crouch said that he would be asking his, quote, holiness. Now, I have a real problem when you're referring to this absolute abhorrent abomination on planet Earth, the Catholic Church, and its, and its chief, chief um, representative, the Pope, who refers to himself as the vicar of Christ. Vicar means replacement. He believes he's the replacement for Jesus Christ on planet Earth. And that's why they have all this garbage about papal infallibility. Because they equate him with Jesus. Jesus Christ was the only sinless man that ever walked the Earth, right? Well, they equate the Pope the same way. Papal infallibility. Talked about that a little bit recently in the last teaching I did on Tom Horn. And the blasphemousness of that. And who who gave us that doctrine? The Jesuits who Tom Horn seems to keep promoting over and over and over again, the Jesuit theologians, the most wicked sect and faction of the Catholic pagan death cult Tom Horn just seems to be obsessed with. Hmm, imagine that. So, Paul Crouch said that he would be asking, quote, his holiness when the walls between Protestants and Catholics would come down. And the church would be one as Jesus asked the Father. Jesus only wanted us to be one if we were grounded in his word. Jesus Christ said, if you continue in my word, 
Then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Everybody wants just, the, the world wants to quote the last part. You shall know the truth, and you know, the truth shall make you free. But if you continue in his word, we're not supposed to be united in error. We are going to be divided. It's much better to be divided in truth than united in error. So, yes, Jesus would want unity among true born-again Bible-believing Christians, but not with pagan religions. Now, here's a picture of Paul Crouch and his a uh, couple of his men. And Paul Crouch is just getting ready to shake the uh, Pope John Paul II's hand. It's, it's out in the open. I mean, they're out, looks like in Vatican Square, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if he's going to give him a Freemasonic handshake or maybe the strong grip of the lion's paw. You know, the when they, uh, the Freemasons do that during one of their oaths. The old strong grip of the lion's paw. Anyway, yeah, they're, they're getting ready to shake hands here. And then, here's a picture of Paul Crouch with uh, Jan and Benny Hinn and they're cutting some kind of cake and in the background is a priest guy with a priest collar uh, laughing and... Uh, He's, he's, now, see, they've got priests on stage. Why? Because you turn it on and you start thinking, wow, Catholics are Christians too. It's do, it's, they're doing this stuff by design to brainwash you, to desensitize you, that you in your own mind think, well, there's no difference. That's exactly what they want you to think. They're trying to take you to hell or at least make you totally ineffective for God. Here's a picture of good old Benny Hinn on stage and he's got, he's wrong with four nuns, and he's interviewing one of the nuns on stage. Here's a picture of Benny Hinn shaking, and this is a separate time, shaking Pope John Paul II's hand. It's all there. They're, they're totally agents of the New World Order and of Rome. Ministries like TBN are there to grease the skids, to pave the way for the amalgamation of Protestantism coming back into the mother whore Catholic death cult. Sorry, I, I know I'm really sugarcoating things. i got to stop that. Anyway, let's go further. Uh, here, Paul and Jan Crouch met together with Mother Teresa in 1992. And Jan testified, quote, It was a dream come true. I had my questions all prepared, but when this precious tiny lady came by, all I could do was fall to my knees. What will it be like when we see Jesus himself face to face? I felt I had a little foretaste of that day. What a blasphemous witch. Mother Teresa, eh? Well, I'll give you a little link here to Mother Teresa, her general activities and teachings. And I did a teaching entitled Rome pushing Mother of the World status for the Mary Goddess and the darkness of Mother Teresa. So we did a whole little uh, teaching on the wickedness of Mother Teresa that you might want to find out about. Because that's all a bunch of garbage about her being whatever. And here we have Jan Crouch basically comparing her to Jesus Christ. What an abomination in the sight of God. I received, um, kind of by accident, uh, a one of the more recent Voice of the Martyrs uh, magazines. I got off their emailing their mailing list um, after I got this, but they're the type of, of organization that you get off their mailing list, you're still going to get three or four more, and you have to keep mailing them back saying second request, third request. If you ever want to know how to get off a mailing list, I think that's the best way. You send it back in their prepaid envelope that they want their donation in, and you say, you know, second request. Circle it, or circle it in red, or highlight it. Third request. Let them know that, you know, they're bothering you and you want off the list. Because if you just say unsubscribe, a lot of times it won't work as well. Anyway, uh, I got this wonderful thing I'm looking at right now. And on the very cover of the newest Voice of the Martyrs for March, and conveniently you can't find this online anywhere. I couldn't find hardly any of the Voice of the Martyrs cover Covers, I couldn't find very little up there derogatory about how they're totally yoked up with Rome at this point. But right on the cover of Voice of the Martyrs, you see a Catholic priest, front and center, crying out to God in prayer in the middle of the streets with his 
faithful congregation behind him. And this is what Christianity is portrayed as in Voice of the Martyrs. It doesn't matter if they're Coptic Christians, which are like a, you know, offshoot of Orthodox. I got into that recently. Or whether they're Catholics. They're all the same. We're one big happy family. And, you know, opening up the Voice of the Martyrs, the, the second page is called A License to Preach. You see the same Catholic priest preaching to a whole bunch of people outside. And then you see a woman, apparently woman Catholic priest, with doing the Catholic communion. She's got the wine. I guess it's their mass they're doing. She's got a priest collar on. It's not something you see very often. Turn the page, and there's that same Catholic priest pleading for... And, and this is what the voice of the martyrs portrays as Christian, Christian persecution. Listen, I don't want to see the Catholics persecuted, but I'm sure not going to go to bat for them and, and act as though they're our brothers and sisters in Christ. And no, why? Because if I do that, then I'm basically saying the Catholic Church is Christianity. And I'm pointing people to the Catholic Church as though there's no difference. Which is only ultimately going to trip people up, put a stumbling block before them, and worst case scenario, take them to hell. No, the Catholic death cult needs to be exposed. And then another one of this Catholic woman priest preaching. What an abomination. So, anyway, I, I, I got this. I'm going to burn it. I just threw it in the fireplace just now. But I wanted just to go over that with you. You can't find these things online hardly. Why? Because they're really good at covering their tracks. I mean, unless you're on their mailing list. And they figure the people on their mailing list aren't going to really expose them. So I'm glad I got that. But see, that was why I got off their mailing list before. Because all of this flagrant Catholic propaganda, it doesn't matter if they're Orthodox, Coptic Christians, Catholics, they're all considered brothers and sisters in Christ persecuted the same way. Well, I found this other article on this online. It's very hard to find anything against Voice of the Martyrs. But uh, this is, starts out by saying, Voice of the Martyrs does not differentiate heretics from Christians in their reporting. They lump Catholics, Adventists, and any other professing supposed Christian faith in with their claim of being persecuted for Jesus. I asked a representative of their ministry on Twitter what their policy was after discussing the issue with him, and he gave me this link on their website. I give you the link. In that document, you can see the ministry policy is not to be concerned with who is who. <laughs> Apparently, all someone needs to do is claim Jesus to get on their list. Why is Voice of the Martyrs wasting funds meant to help Christians on heretics. So understand, if you're giving them your, their money, this 501c3 corporation, your money, a lot of your money may wind up into rebuilding Catholic churches and rebuilding Coptic Christian churches like they were destroying in Egypt. Now, again, I'm not, obviously, I don't want any of that. I don't want them persecuting the Catholics and these types of things. But you gotta, you know, point out who's leading people to hell and who's not. And these are works-based false cults. And we shouldn't be helping to rebuild their church so that they can propagate more hell-bound garbage. Or hell-damning garbage, I guess I should say. Because that's what they're doing. They're just taking their congregates to hell. No, they should be being exposed. Richard Wombrand is not a Catholic. But as I am... Now, he's the main guy at Voice of the Martyrs. But as I am told... By Voice of the Martyrs on Twitter, Richard Rumbrand suffered in prison with Catholics. It is clear by their policy statement on the matter that Voice of the Martyrs considers Catholicism to be merely a denomination of Christianity. Again, this gigantically huge push to de-differentiate any difference between true Bible-believing Christianity and Catholicism. Huge, gigantic push coming from hundreds and hundreds of ministries. And I'm seeing seeming uh, more of these ministries jump on this bandwagon by the week. That's what, we're that's what we're really discussing today. This unbelievably alarming trend. Which the Bible predicted. But I'm, you mean, it needs to be, this is a gigantic uh, red flag. And it's a trap. Uh, there are many Protestants that were tortured by Catholics that would argue very vehemently, 
with you if they could. So we must argue for them instead. And I, again, I just did that teaching not too recently on the Inquisition, on all of the horrific ways the Catholic Church slaughtered many, many born-again Bible-believing Christians in the most horrific manners that you most sexually twistedly perverted manners that you could ever conceive in your mind and they did it all day long for hundreds of years all saying that they were agents of God they even labeled some of the to- the uh, torture devices with uh, terms like for the Lord or, or you know whatever when there's no new New Testament precedent for us going around doing this to other people well, they just make up the rules as they go. They are of their father, the devil, and of his lust and of his works they will do. So, one brand seems to have elevated his personal experience above scriptural authority. I am saddened to hear Voice of the Martyrs is allowing themselves to be used by heretics to spread their heresy as they help, quote, persecuted Catholics rebuild their churches. It would not be difficult for you, Voice of the Martyrs, to identify the denomination of the person under persecution. But yet you refuse to do that. So you taint your news of Christian persecution with doubt. Now, I skimmed that article, and I didn't see anything that these were Catholics, but they're all dressed up like Catholic priests. So they are. But they refuse to identify them as Catholics. But listen, you look at the picture, and you do the math in your head, and you're like, well, oh, they're Christians. No, they just said they were Christians. They're doing it on purpose so that you will equate the priest collar with Christians. They're being persecuted. We need to get on their side. We need to all get united. We need to we need to get united on the side of persecution. See, we need to get united with the Catholics in regard to the abortion rights because they're on the right side of the issue there. True. But I'm not going to get yoked up with them. We need to get united with the Catholics in regard to this persecution that's going on worldwide against Catholics and other supposed Christian denominations. No, we don't. I don't need to get yoked up with them at all. That's the trap that Satan is hoping that you will buy into. And then you start buddy, buddying up with these people and it's no good. There's no Bible for it. The Bible says to be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. They are an unbeliever. They are a religion based on total pure works. Keeping the seven sacraments. Doing this. Doing that. Earning your way to heaven. Don't work that way. You're saved by grace through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2.11 Now, I did a whole teaching on salvation. You can go to contendingfortruth.com Click on the salvation tab at the start. It says true salvation and it will go through the whole... There's a series of teachings, but the first one is specifically on salvation. If you need to get saved, please do that, because that is the most important thing you will ever do, ever, in your life, if you're not saved. So please do that now. Now, I did have another clip where I got into Voice of the Martyrs, um, and it's funny, I just checked that, and I, I found it about two or three weeks ago. Somebody had taken it, one of my listeners, and put it up there. I don't know, it's probably like a ten minute clip, maybe maybe five, I don't know. A Voice of the Martyrs? I can't find it now. They, I really believe Voice of the Martyrs does damage control on a very high level because there's very, very little you can find out derogatory about them. They're very good at what they do. And yes, they are that sly. Most of these ministries are that sly. They want to keep you in the dark. Anyway, I give you the link to that teaching. And it's actually one of the updates I did on the Gulf. When the Gulf... Um, of course, that's still going on to a large extent. They're just covering it up. But I give you the link there, and the voice of the mar- martyr warning is near the end. So let's sh- let's shift gears here. And let's see where we're at on time. Um, next article, or next little clip I'm going to play. Pat Robinson says Catholics are Christians. So again, this theme that I got for this week. I just got a ton of information that I've been compiling about all of these major, high-level ministries that reach hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, and they're all saying the same stuff. We've given you the quotes from Chuck Missler. Catholics are Christians. 
Pat Robinson, Catholics are Christians. Paul Crouch, TBN, Catholics are Christians. I'm not protesting anything anymore, Paul Crouch said, because we're all the same. Benny Hinn, Catholics are Christians, yoked up with Rome, shaking the Pope's hand. Tom Horn, same deal. It's epidemic. And it couldn't be anything further from the truth. But yes, this is the this is the current dogma and rhetoric we're getting. Okay, so I'm going to play this clip here, and it's um, they start out by saying we're going to have some fun. It's on CBN, uh, CBN.com, and uh, this is uh, Pat Robertson, and uh, this is a question that he was getting, and I'm just going to let them talk here. I think we have time for one more. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Eva yeah. says, what's the difference between being a Catholic and a Christian? Uh, I, I don't think the Catholics would like to say that they're not Christian. And uh, I'm not going to get on this um, and say there's a difference. But I, cause I, I don't want to get in a big controversy. Oh, what backbone! This guy's got a backbone like a redwood! Unbelievable! What Christian... How, how he earnestly contends for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. This is an example to every one of us how we need to act mealy mouth, lukewarm, and weak. Denying the God who bought us to the Lord Jesus Christ in his blood, which is essentially what he's doing. Oh, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to, he's a pleaser of men. He's a pleaser of men. What are you talking about? He's not trying to please God. He's trying to please men. The fear of man bring up a snare. That's that's what this is all about. Let's let's let him uh, paint himself into a further of a corner. Uh, uh, Catholics believe in a particular uh, way of worship. Uh, they believe in a number of things having to do with uh, rituals. Uh, and communion and so forth that may be different from the Protestants, but uh, uh, it's they're both considered Christian. Yeah, absolutely. The, well, yeah, I'm so glad that we got that clarification. They're both considered Christian. Oh, so all the pagan practices, all of the garbage that they do, the pedophile priesthood, the, the millions upon millions upon millions the Catholic Church killed during the Inquisition, the papal infallibility... The whole the whole blasphemous doctrine of transubstantiation, training the uh, you know in, in the mass, praying to idols, bowing down to idols, praying to uh, people for different things, not to Jesus Christ, praying to Mary, believing that she's the co-redemptrix, meaning you got to get saved through her and Jesus Christ. That's all Christian, and they want to make sure that you know that 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 there's no doubt about that that's the case, and we just need to believe it. Because we're dumb sheeple people, which is how they treat their their followers, the frozen chosen, and they're as stupid as you could possibly imagine. I mean, that's the way they talk. I mean, it's like anybody that's researched this understands that that's not the case. But if you follow man, if this is your source of spiritual nourishment, you are going to be defiled. Through their bad doctrine. Jesus Christ said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees, which is their doctrine. He just gave you really bad, false doctrine. Leaven. Little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Little bad doctrine permeates through you and starts to just totally mess you up spiritually. That's what they want. They want you to get tripped up. They want you to get on the false path. They want you to be on the broad way which lead to destruction. And many there be that go there. That's where they're going and they want to take you with them. That's the whole goal of these shows. Well, that and they want to get real rich on the side and and make sure they make tons of money before they plunge into hell. That's the truth. Well, they figure if we're going to serve Satan, we might as well benefit from it. The difference is people use the term born again and so forth, uh, but there's no difference. And they're born again Catholics, they're mm-hmm. spirit filled Catholics. Absolutely. Born again spiritual filled Catholics, and there's no difference. Well, I, you know what would have been really good if he would have added a thus saith the Lord to that? 
That would have even topped, that would have been like the cherry on top of the sundae on that one. Do you believe this rank blasphemy? I, I pray God he rained down his fury on their lying tongues. That they be destroyed, that all men would see and fear and declare the work of God. Is it more merciful for them to continue in these blasphemous ministries? Denying Jesus Christ? Putting forth and spewing forth horrifically soul-damning doctrine? Is it more merciful for me to pray that, oh, prosper them in their wickedness, God. Prosper them. Because I wouldn't want to offend, I wouldn't want to judge. When Jesus, when the Bible says to mark them, over and over and over, that's who Jesus contended with. The religious leaders that were spewing out the majority of false doctrine during the day, then Jesus Christ walked the earth, the Pharisees and Sadducees, those were the main ones he was dealing with. That's who he went against. It's the only time you ever really ever saw him get mad is when he contended with them. I mean, this, this is serious stuff. I mean, this is heaven or hell stuff. And he's, you know, he's just going to give you his little mealy mouth opinion. That's why the Bible says, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and that maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. When If you're putting your trust in this devil, you're under a curse, you're, you've brought a curse on yourself, and that curse will blind you. You're making flesh your arm, meaning this man, or this ministry, and your heart will depart from the Lord. No matter how pure your intentions may be. Well, they believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. But, uh, there's a difference in the liturgy. No, they don't. They don't believe Jesus Christ is the Messiah. They don't. They don't trust in Jesus Christ for their salvation. They trust in their own works. They trust in all of the garbage that they've got to go through. All the hoops they have to jump through as a Catholic. If they trusted in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, they would put away all that garbage and get away from all that paganism. No, it's the very opposite. I won't go into all the differences between the two uh, faiths, but what I've done on this program and we try to do is to bring us together. Exactly, brother. Speak and, it. And to yeah, brother. Speak it. Work together. Okay? Being unequal, unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That's right. That's what Jesus Christ wants us. He wants us to be unequally yoked with a whole bunch of heretics, unbelievers in this sick, disgusting death cult that is, has the blood of more, more martyrs on planet earth than any other religion is responsible for. That's what Jesus Christ would want. Right. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. So thank you, Pat Robertson, for that unbelievably eloquent exposition on the scriptures. I love how you really backed everything up you said with scripture, of course. It was basically... Your it was one big uh, lukewarm satanic opinion on your part. That's all you really got. Now here's another link you can click on for a full listing of his, um, not a full, but a pretty good listing of his heretical activities documented throughout the years. And here's another link um, where it's entitled Christianity Incorporated, Pat Robertson. Another link you can click on. Here's another link. It's called the 700 Club Psychics, because this is his deal, 700 Club. And um, Pat Robertson, estimated his, his estimated worth is between, at the time of this writing, 150 to 200 million. 150 to 200 million. Listen, serving Satan has its rewards. There are perks to serving Satan and selling out. He's a generational Luciferian, though. He, his bloodline goes back, Pat Robertson. And I'll give you the links that will uh, get into that. But Robertson lives on top of a Virginia mountain in a huge mansion with a private airstrip. Wow, that's a really big trend. These guys, I tell you what, they just flying around in their jets. and Yeah, that's, it's amazing. Well, you sell out to Satan, again, there's, there's a lot of benefits to doing that. Consider... Uh, and I love this one. This is one of my favorite. Now, again, the New World Order is only going to promote their own. Okay? Time Magazine is an absolute total New World Order mouthpiece tool. Here it is, Pat Robertson, right on the cover of Time Magazine. 
February 17, 1986, to give you a big old picture you can, you can look at for yourself. When he was trying to gather support for his run for president, yeah, he, he ran for president at one time. And it's, it's wonderful that he has got, and he's showing his allegiance right on the cover, he is making, remember I said that the strong grip of the lion's paw? That's a Freemasonic uh, thing they do during one of the initiation degrees when they lift their brother, their fellow, fellow uh, Masonic brother out of the coffin. It's their version of being born again. You do it, it's called the strong grip of the lion's paw. Well, there's a symbol for that, and it's where you would take your hand and you would bend your knuckles in at like a 90 degree angle, and you and he's on the cover of Time Magazine, doing this Freemasonic gesture, called the Lion's Paw hand gesture, right on the cover, and it is not even remotely subtle. And it, it looks so out of place. It's like, what is he doing? Why is his hand that way? It's not a natural... It's not like he's got just a hand on his chest, like your pledge allegiance to the flag. He's got it in the total Freemasonic um, Lion's Paw gesture. Right there on the cover of Time Magazine. Right there. I give you the picture. Not my opinion. 100% verified. Here is another thing where we see Pat Robertson displaying the satanic El Diablo sign during a 700 Club show. The so-called Christian Voice of America, off the, off also Soft Pedal's Big Brother Surveillance Society, Pat Robertson, the so-called Christian Voice of America, has been caught um, displaying the El Diablo red-handed which is the Cornudo sign, the Hail Satan sign, flashing occultic and satanic hand gestures during a show. During Thursday's show, the 700 Club program, Robertson clearly could be seen displaying the El Diablo hand gesture toward the end of the, end of the broadcast. Here's another one. Um, this is on a little different related note. The, I've got a, And again, I'm trying to piece together a lot of the same theme in this teaching today of this push and this identifying factor of Luciferians in these high ministries. This is from a listener named Adam. He says, hey Scott, I remember when you did a warning on Gary Stearman showing that he was un unsure of whether UFO or abduction experiences were from God or the devil. Yes, true. Um, just key in Stearman, or Gary Stearman, in the keyword search box at contendingfortruth.com. It was the one I did on Tom Horn as well. Uh, I was watching a video... He did on angels, Gary Stearman, from October 2nd, 2010, between the 12 and 13 minute mark, I, and I watched this, it's true, he flashes the Cornudo hand signal twice when talking about cherubims in Genesis 3. This cannot possibly be by accident, after all, Satan is a cherub. True, he is. He's not a fallen angel, he's a fallen cherub. He was called the anointed cherub that covereth. See Ezekiel. Anyway, I have seen him flash the sign in a less obvious way in more recent videos as well. He has shown who his allegiance is to now. There are probably plenty of other times throughout his many video recordings that he's done the same thing. God bless Adam. I mean, the thing is, is these guys do this stuff all the time. It's just that, you know, unless you're there watching it or recording it, you, you miss it, you know. Um, my reply, thank you, I did a study on that sign, and it's called the Cornudo sign, El Diablo, Devil's Horn, Diabolicus, Hook'em Horns, one of my favorites, and the I Love You hand signal, Helen Keller, uh, who was a high-level occultist. Anyway, I did, a, I did a whole teaching on that, you can click on there if you want to know more about that hand symbol. Now, here's another one I got from a, a, a listener, and she says... Thanks, Scott. I knew people who worked for Pat Robinson at CBN back during the time he was courting the presidential nomination. My Christian friends described him as reminding them of Hitler and said that he often blew up into ranting fits of rage. I met Robinson in 1984 or 1985 on my first 700 Club appearance. Evidently, I guess she actually was on the 700 Club. Anyway, Dr. Lester Summerall was there for the show. I didn't get a bad feeling from Dr. Summerall, but when Pat Robinson shook my hand to greet me, I felt sickened by his vibration. He felt evil. Now, I've heard this on many, many occasions, when people will shake someone's hand in particular, of these high-level occultist guys, and they get, it's just like instant spiritual discernment. Sickening feeling. This isn't the first time I've heard this. He and Dr. Summerall seem to be buddy-buddy. 
which bothered me because I thought that someone like Dr. Summerall should have a better spiritual discernment uh, than I, a fairly new addition to the body of Christ. After the show, Pat invited Dr. Summerall and me to his office for a chat and to see his priceless art collection. So, he lives, he's got assets between 150 and 200 million, and that's just what we know about. He's probably got all kind of offshore shell corporations to boot. He has a private airstrip. He has this check, I mean, it's, it's a lot like TBN, just a little mini version. He's got a priceless art collection. How much good could that money be done, given to widows, orphans, the poor, r- worthy ministries that, you know, really need maybe support to keep going, that type of thing? No, none of that's going to that. It's all going to number one, baby, Pat Robinson. Number, it's all about looking out for number one. Priceless art collection. Wow. Money well spent. That money is so much better spent in that art collection than helping like the the poor and the widows and the orphans and the, yeah, it's it's so much better spent than that. And then TBN's, you know, they're three hundred and eighty four million dollars in, in net assets. I mean, you know. Come on, we gotta have our priorities. We gotta build these gigantic palatial mansions and these gigantic huge ministries and these testaments to ourselves and it's all about me, 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 you know. Serving the God of self. That's what it's all about, isn't it? I mean, come on. It's a dog eat dog world. We gotta get we gotta get whatever we can get. You know, it's all about me. Well this is how they live their lives. This is how they live their life. I mean, I don't care what comes out of their mouth. Their actions speak louder than words. And their actions are loud and clear. <laughs> this is unbelievable. So, we went to, um, he, invited, he invited Dr. Summerall and me to his office for a chat. And so we could see his priceless art collection. <laughs> Nothing like flaunting your, your wealth. Oh my word, this is unbelievable. I politely excused myself from the invitation, though. In truth, I could not bear to be in that man's company. It always bothered me that Dr. Summerall, who wouldn't just let anyone touch him or shake his hand, seemed to be oblivious to the evil presence around Pat Robertson. And it was all too friendly, and was all too friendly with this man. Next article. Robert Schuller. Trust the Catholic Church with the Crystal Cathedral. Here's a picture of the Crystal Cathedral uh, in Garden Grove, uh, California. The bankruptcy sale of the Crystal Cathedral, a glass-walled Orange County church known for its Hour of Power broadcasts, should be Hour of Apostasy, but anyway, has touched off a bidding war between the Roman Catholic Diocese and a local university. The church's ministry, meanwhile, has announced that its campus is not for sale and launched a pledge drive to keep the cathedral. And again, there is a lot of Bible for building these multi-million dollar church buildings like this because we've got to have this as the body of Christ. We've got to, you know, have those types. I mean, Jesus Christ said to do that and the apostles did. They, They were building gigantic, huge churches at the time of the New Testament when it was written. And they were telling all of their followers to do the same. That's where we need to put our money into. We don't need to help the body of Christ, which, I know, hold on, that's what the Bible says to actually use it for, the body of Christ. Hmm. If you do a study on New Testament giving, key in New Testament giving, or tithing or whatever, in the keyword search box at contendingfortruth.com, I did a whole study on this. The, I, I, it's called the Old Testament Levitical tithe compared to New Testament giving. It's not even it's not even a point of debate. But they love to beat everybody over the head with oh tithe tithe tithe. All these churches, why? Because it's so convenient. It's so easy of a way they can just say, well, yeah, Malachi or whatever. Well, what does the New Testament say about the concept of New Testament giving? As a man of purpose in his heart, so let him give, for the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. And actually bringing your ties together to actually help one another in the body of Christ. And to care for widows and orphans and the poor. And, 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 the, and the preachers who were, you know, dedicated to that and putting out truth. 
No, no, no. That's not where our, our money should go. No way. It, it needs to go to building these gigantic corporate uh, ministerial 501c3 empires that get the right to exist by the IRS and the government and have the, the CEO appointed as the pastor and the board of directors as the deacons. And that's how they're designated by the IRS to abide by their guidelines. And if you don't abide by them, that's shame on you because you should be. You signed the contract. I mean, that, you know, what's wrong with me? Why, why do I keep, you know, fighting this? I should just go with the flow. Right? Should I just go with the flow? No, I'll fight it till I die. I'll fight it to my dying breath. I mean, all this does is make me want to fight harder. Not because I'm so wonderful or so perfect. Because I'm anything but that. But it just strengthens my resolve when I see this wickedness increasing and this evil and it's so flagrant and it's so in your face. It just makes me want to fight even harder. So what if I die? Absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord. Death for a Christian is the door to heaven. That's awesome. Consider it the highest honor to die in the service of Jesus Christ. As unworthy as I would be, it would be the highest honor for a Christian. I mean, if you were in God's will doing it, I mean, you wouldn't want to be out of his will and die for something (coughs) stupid. But, you know. Anyway, there's a bidding war between the Roman Catholic Diocese and a local university. I don't know what this world's coming to. I really don't. The church's ministry, meanwhile, is they're not going to give up their cancer, or their campus, cancer, it is a cancer, anyway. Uh, And they've launched a pledge drive to keep the cathedral. Can you imagine the overhead? Well, what did they do on Jesus Christ Day? They went from home to home, and they had little home churches where there was basically zero overhead because those people had their own homes. So there wasn't like all this overhead that they've got in all of these churches now. 501c3 Corporation, sorry. The Roman Catholic Church, now this is Robert Schuller, quote from this, about this subject. Now he was the same one I reported on. He was, he, because of him and, and his family, they've, they're the ones that bankrupted the church. And even after they've bankrupted the church, through their greed, they were requesting um, food be brought to them in limousines so that they could be fed properly. I I reported on this about a month and a half ago, I think. And it broke when all the scandal broke about the Crystal Cathedral going down the the, the, uh, tubes. The Roman Catholic Church isn't going to change its theologies. Schuler said in an interview with Los Angeles Times, published Sunday, he said, I trust them. Now, I think what he means here, when the Roman Catholic Church isn't going to change its theologies, I mean the Crystal Cathedral's theologies, evidently. Robert Schuler said, I trust them. Well, sure. He says Luciferian, most likely just a generational Luciferian. Wolf in sheep's clothing. Born and bred for this particular role he's playing right now. Serving as Illuminati handlers, ultimately serving Satan. And sure, he's going to say that. He trusts them. The ministry's decision to sell the famous building to Roman Catholic Diocese of Orange County raised some controversy at first. In the Sunday interview, the 85-year-old minister said he has always respected the Roman Catholic faith and considers it the mother church. Isn't that special? I mean, that should really make you warm and fuzzy all over. He's always respected the Roman Catholic Church and considered is it the mother church. But do you see this gigantic, not-so-subtle push toward pointing back to the great mother whore, Rome, and saying it's the mother church. We should trust it. They're Christians just like us. In fact, they're better Christians than us. They're the ones that have the true faith. And we need to go back into the mother whore so we could be its little harlots and abominations as well. That's what they're saying. Now I've done some teachings on this that reaffirms this. The first one is called The Pope Bears His Inquisition Teeth. 
Do you realize they've reinstituted the Office of Inquisition, which was the very office that they used before to slaughter millions upon millions upon millions of Christians during the Inquisitions, the hundreds of years that the Inquisitions ran? They've reinstituted that. So it's entitled, The Pope Bears the Inquisition, Bears His Inquisition Teeth and Declares the Catholic Church as the Only True Church. Just like Robert Schuller just did. They're the Mother Church. It's the Only True Church. Next article I did is called The National Council of Churches, which is more primarily a Protestant denomination. National Council of Churches affirms the Catholic Church as, quote, the one true church. End of quote. Both those articles were back in 2007. So, um, June and July. Well, that's almost five years ago. So, you can imagine it's only been building momentum for a long time. And then another um, one I did where I talked about Pat, about Schuler. It's entitled Rev, Reverend Falwell, Reverend Sung, Sung Young Moon and the Love of Money. And then Robert Schuler's Rethink Conference exposed. So I'll give you the links there if you want to know about more about Robert Schuler. Then I have some outside links about Robert Schuler. Uh, first link, he endorses the Passion of Christ movie, which was just more, nothing more than just about a Catholic propaganda film. Mel Gibson, who was a Catholic, and many people that were had a lot to do with that show. And then also the general teachings of Robert Schuler and his activities. And then a link entitled Self-Esteem, Self-esteem or Satanic Error. And then another link titled Quotes from Self-Esteem and the New Reformation. Okay, so going further with this report. The Schuler family, which worked with a board of directors in the bankruptcy trial, originally endorsed a different bidder for the signature Glass property, who was Chapman University, which was the highest bidder, actually, at $59 million. However, on November 17th, the Schulers reluctantly endorsed a $57.5 million bid of the Roman Catholic Diocese, which was almost $1.5 million less, or it was $1.5 million less, which was a decision supported by the creditors. Hmm. The diocese terms required the ministry to leave the premises within three years. So the Catholics are saying, okay, we'll buy it. you got to be out of there in three years. I'm surprised it wasn't sooner. But they bid $1.5 million less. Now, you could just skim over that and just keep reading and not think anything about it. But could it be that since, obviously, they endorsed the Catholic Church, obviously the Catholic Church probably had a lot to do with them getting in the position that they're in, propagating false Christianity, propagating... Catholics are Christians, propagating them as the mother church, as Schuler said, that the Catholic church came back to them and said, listen, you're going to uh, take this other bid, even though it's less money, because we say you're going to take this other bid for less money. We're going to get a better deal on this. And that's just the way it is. I mean, why would they take a lower bid? Hmm. I bet you there's no coincidence there. The Crystal Cathedral has not been doing well financially since 2002. And a year ago, administrators filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Since then, members have been trying to save the church, donating money from their own pockets. Boy, I tell you, what a colossal waste of money. Which proved not enough to pull the church out of its estimated $50 million in debt. Well, that's biblical, getting $50 million in debt. When the Bible says the borrower is slave to the lender and to owe no man anything but to love him. Yeah. We definitely want to be slave to the lender. We want to be in as much debt as possible. And they're setting a great example for their congregants. You know, only 50 million in debt. I mean, come on. What's a, what's a few million here or there? So again, another great example they're setting. When on November 30th, senior pastor Sheila Schuler Coleman I guess it's his daughter. She's the senior pastor there now, which is biblically in order. She publishes a video address. You can see it. There's a link to it on the ministry supporters, to the ministry supporters. Many expressed 
express faith that the church might still be saved at the 11th hour. Now I did a teaching on what can women do for the Lord. And listen, this has nothing to do with me being a chauvinistic pig or whatever. It's just about what does the Bible say. That's all I'm really concerned with. In this study, we will primarily be looking at the subject of what women can do for the Lord and women pastors. The biblical qualifications for pastors, elders, deacons, and spiritual overseers. And you will quickly see that it is the husband of one wife, not the wife of one husband. It's not even mentioned. It wasn't a biblical position for for a woman to hold anywhere in the New Testament, really, or in the Old. Of course, they didn't have pastors in the Old, but you know what I mean. Anyway, I just give you all the Bible verses for that, and it's not... You ever had a woman come back to me and say, I was really offended by your teaching. I'm not trying to... Because I don't do it in an offensive way. I'm not, it's not about me, like... Male chauvinism, domination, or whatever. I'm not, that's not what it's about. I'm just about, what does the Bible say? That's all I really am concerned with. So, anyway, if you want to avail yourself to that. But, uh, then going further, in the interview with LA Times, the Reverend Shuler, again, Reverend, totally unbiblical title, for a human. It's only used one time in the Bible, and it's in reference to God, where it says, holy and reverend is he, God. It's blasphemous for, for a human to take that title on. When it's only used one time in the Bible in reference to God. Reverend Schuler said, and again, just came Reverend in this keyword search box at contendingfortruth.com. It's only like 20 minutes, I think. Reverend Schuler said he drew inspiration for the popular televangelism show, The Hour of Power, from Catholic Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. So, in other words, his main televangelism show, The Hour of Power from the Crystal Cathedral, Schuler said he drew the inspiration for that show from the Catholic Archbishop, Fulton J. Sheen. Sheen hosted nighttime, the host of the nighttime radio program, The Catholic Hour, for 20 years, and then hosted a television program named as Life is Worth Living in the 1950s. We're glad to know, Robert Schuler, where you draw your inspiration from and where you drew it from. You drew it out of the well of Satan, essentially. Orange County Roman Catholic Bishop Todd Brown told the LA Times that the newly acquired property will become, quote, the heart and center for our Catholic community. And again, this not-so-subtle yoking up of the Protestant denominations with the Catholic and viewing them as no different whatsoever. So I'm going to go ahead... And end part two there, and we will go to part three next. God bless you.